Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. For today's sermon, we're continuing through our sermon series on the small called Articles, Article 2 of Part 2, going through the abuses that Luther mentions in regards to the Papal Mass. And today's abuse is the second abuse of ghosts. Let us pray. Lord, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Now, the English word ghost comes from the German word meaning spirit. And hence why in older English translations, the Holy Spirit is known as the Holy Ghost. However, for the sake of this video, I will use the term ghost in reference to disembodied human souls, and I will reserve the word spirit in reference to angels or demons. Now, this is not the first time that Luther has mentioned this abuse of ghosts. In 1521, when speaking on the abuse of the Mass in Luther's The Misuse of the Mass, he mentions ghosts there. But more importantly, in 1530, in the lead-up to the Diet of Augsburg, Luther prepared a list of problems that he needed to discuss if a council was ever going to be called. And in this list, Luther listed 114 items. The bottom items on the list were less important, such as the lighting of candles on St. Belthius's day to cure a sore throat, whereas the top of the list was reserved for the more important items, item number one being indulgences and item number two being the sacrifice of the mass. Item number five, Luther wrote poltergeists. Out of all the problems with the Roman Catholic Church, the fifth most important issue that Luther sought to discuss was the Catholics' teaching on the appearance of human ghosts. Now before we look at what Luther said in regards to these ghosts, let us first look at Holy Scripture and the Church Fathers. Now human ghosts do not appear all over Scripture. The closest text we can find to this would be the encounter in 1 Samuel 28 in which, Saint, in which King Saul goes to the witch of Endor in order to speak to the prophet Samuel. Now in the text, the witch describes seeing a vision of a man, a ghost, and King Saul asks what the man looked like. When the woman describes the man, Saul recognizes it as Samuel. Note that it is not Saul who sees this spirit, it is instead the witch. Now regarding this text, there is a lot of disagreement and speculation. If one is simply to read the text at faith's value, it would appear that this is the ghost, the disembodied soul of Samuel. And it has been summoned in order to talk to King Saul. Others who reject the existence and appearance of human ghosts would instead argue that this is a demon pretending to be Samuel. Pastor Paul Kretzmann, in his popular commentary on the Bible, taught that this could not be Samuel, since Samuel was a believer, and Scripture teaches that upon death the believer ascends into heaven. Thus, this must be a demon appearing as Samuel. On the other hand, Pastor Ralph Gerick of the Missouri Synod, in his classic Concordia commentary, mentions that there are three different proposals that have been put forth to explain this text. One is that the witch is just lying or crazy. She's just making up the story to Saul. Two, the other is that this is a demonic encounter in which a demon pretends to be Samuel. The other suggestion is that this could be a case of divine intervention, meaning that in normal circumstances, human souls don't come back to earth, but that in this circumstance, God made an exception. Similar to how God spoke through the pagan prophet Baal, or through the Jewish high priest Ananias or Caiaphas whenever he wanted to prophesy. Garrick himself states that the Lord intervened and permitted Samuel to appear in this form. He later states that Saul requested the witch to speak with Samuel and Samuel actually comes. Also, John Mittelstadt of the Wisconsin Synod in his People's Bible Commentary taught that some Bible commenters think the witch is lying, others believe it is a demon, and others believe that this is a miraculous intervention from God, which is the position that Mittelstadt takes. He also then compares this to the accounts of Moses and Elijah appearing at the Mount of Transfiguration. Now, the Church Fathers 
were similarly divided on the matter. The Church Father Tertullian rejected the appearance of human ghosts and believed that this was not just any demon, but Satan himself in the appearance of Samuel. While Justin Martyr believed that this was Samuel's ghost, and that also any Christian could have this happen to them, and that we should therefore pray that nobody interferes with our own soul upon death. Saint Methodius believed that this was the real soul of Samuel, and not a demon. Saint Augustine of Hippo is the interesting figure who takes a unique position on this. Augustine is the leading figure in the early church regarding human ghosts. Augustine based upon Luke 16 of the account of Lazarus and the rich men, rejects the teaching that human ghosts can appear, for their souls either ascend to heaven or descend to hell, and they are not roaming the earth. Augustine, however, uh, Augustine held that there was no reason for the dead to come and visit the living, though he did hold out that it did was possible due to the account of Samuel. So essentially, this belief that on a normal circumstance, ghosts do not come and speak to the living, but in Samuel's case, it did happen, Augustine is the first one to propose that position. Now, the Reformers and the early Lutherans taught differently. Luther believed this was a demonic spirit, as did John Calvin and the Reformed. The early Lutheran theologian August Pfeiffer argued that if we use the principle of Scripture interpret Scripture, we can conclude that this must indeed be a demon and not Samuel. However, if someone in the Lutheran Church wishes to disagree with the early Lutherans and instead follow the early Church and believe that this was the real Samuel and not a demon, then this is indeed an open question. Though, following the principles of Holy Scripture, we should, like St. Augustine, teach that this was an exceptional case, as it is with the cases of Elijah and Moses on the Mount of Transfiguration. Now, as Luther teaches, and as Augustine taught, in ordinary circumstances, the souls of the deceased do not come and speak with the living. If a person is visited by a ghost then in the present, this is not a deceased person, but it is a demon in disguise. In the small cold articles, Luther spoke of evil spirits, causing rascal behavior by appearing as the souls of the departed and demanding masses, vigils, pilgrimages, and other alms. Augustine had rejected the idea of the appearance of human souls, but the Roman Catholics teach otherwise. The Catholics believe that the saints possess the ability to come and give special instructions to the living, such as Joan of Arc, who claimed that the, angel Mar the Archangel Michael, as well as Saints Catherine and Saint Margaret, instructed her to lead France to victory over England. The Catholics also held that those in purgatory could visit the living to plead for masses and indulgences to get them out of purgatory. This teaching of the Roman Church goes back to St. Pope Gregory the Great. Gregory writes of an account between two monks, Eustace and Copius. According to Gregory, Eustace had confessed on his deathbed that he had hidden three pieces of gold and thus broken the monastic vow of poverty. Therefore, Gregory decreed that the monk could not be buried in the monastery cemetery, and that Gregory believed that Eustace's soul was suffering in purgatory. Now, after 30 days of suffering, Gregory decreed that Eustace had suffered enough and could now enter into heaven. And according to Gregory, Copius claimed that the ghost of Eustace then appeared to him to comfort him and to inform him that he was now ascending from purgatory into heaven. This writing of Pope Gregory forms the foundation of the later development of the papist view of ghosts. And many scholars believe that it is actually this story from Gregory that Luther is referring to in the small cold articles. But in Luther's 1521, The Misuse of the Mass, Luther confessed that the appearance of ghosts were really just demonic spirits. 
and that this is because they were asking people for masses of the dead and indulgences, which are leading people away from justification by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Therefore, since the spirits were teaching false doctrines and leading people astray, then they must be demons. During Luther's ministry, he dealt with several situations which, in which people claimed to have seen the ghosts of deceased humans. But Luther held firm to Holy Scripture, particularly to the account of Lazarus and the rich men, that upon death the soul of the deceased goes to either heaven or hell, and that it is impossible for them to visit the living. Thus, whenever someone claimed to have seen the ghost of a human, Luther would inquire what was being taught, taught. For John tells us in 1 John 4, 1, to test the spirits. And if the spirits lead us away from Christ as our Saviour, then they must not be humans, but demonic spirits. So Luther and the early Lutherans rejected the papist idea that human ghosts visit the living. And if a spirit visits you and claims to be a deceased human, then it is lying to you and is an evil spirit, which is up to no good. And so, Luther considered the belief in human ghosts to be the fifth greatest issue in the Roman Church. Henceforth, Luther included this abuse in the small cold articles, stating, that due to the teaching of the sacrifice of the Mass, evil spirits were now appearing as the souls of the departed, demanding Masses, vigils, pilgrimages, and other alms. And in regards to this, Luther states that here too, there is no room for compromise or concession. Thus we Lutherans reject, as a papist error, the teaching that the souls of the departed can visit the living. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.